truly the Lord's mercy it endures until the end I hear that song my soul loves Jesus my soul loves Jesus my soul loves Jesus bless his name he's a praise him he's worthy to be praised god is worthy he's done so much for us hallelujah he is truly a wonder when you think about the goodness of our god and how he has saved us god is a wonder hallelujah i believe i have a word for you today coming from the epistle of paul when he wrote to the romans um I want to read in your hearing, starting in um, Romans, the third chapter, and I am going to begin at verse 23 and read down to verse 25. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Hallelujah. I came to let somebody know that the blood has covered us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for all that you have done for us. This great salvation that we have received because you gave your only begotten son. Truly, God, you are a wonder. And I bless your name today. I magnify you and I glorify you. So, Lord, I ask as I speak your word that the anointing would flow and that you would speak to your people father god let your word as i pray god let it re not return unto you void but i ask in jesus name that it would accomplish what you are sending it to do so father lead me by your spirit through this message so that your people would be edified and you my lord would be glorified so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart father let it be acceptable in thy sight O lord my my strength and my redeemer i pray and i ask these things in the mighty name of jesus amen i came with a question tonight who could not love the lord for he is so good as i was alluding to earlier he is so good and he has done so much for us in that he has saved us from, you know, this eternal separation that we were facing, eternal separation from God. And I can only imagine as Paul wrote this epistle, as he probably reminisced over his life, how he was one that persecuted Christians. He was one that, you know, watched why Stephen was being stoned to death. 
he could appreciate this great salvation that he received. You know why? Because he was on his way to Damascus. He was going to pull some more Christians out of their house and God got a hold of his life. Aren't you glad that God has gotten a hold of your life as well? But Paul lets us know in this epistle, and I would encourage you to read it in its entirety. He encourages us in this third chapter that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And he lets us know that our only way out, because see, Adam, the first Adam, he was in the garden and he was enjoying this fellowship. Think about it for just a second. God created Adam and Eve so that he could come down to this garden and fellowship with them. They could talk with God. Hallelujah. They could fellowship with him freely. And then the serpent got in and he deceived Eve and then Eve gave the fruit or encouraged Adam to take that fruit. Disobeyed God. And because Adam disobeyed God, because he was the one that God had given the commandment to, here comes sin, here come death, here come all this evil, and broke that beautiful fellowship that they had with the Lord God Almighty. But God wasn't through yet. Aren't you glad that even when we mess up, God ain't finished with us? Hallelujah. God always is about you know, repentance. Even if you look at the children of Israel, they God did so much for them people. God brought them out. God wrought miracles. God fought for them. He destroyed nations for them. He parted the Red Sea. He brought them out of Egypt. He loved them a pillar of um, a cloud by day. He was with them. Uh, the pillar of fire by night. And can you even imagine? He would come down. Hallelujah. When they had that ark of God, he would come down. But these are the same people with all that glory. These are the same ones that would turn their back on God. But God, he never gave up on them. I came to declare to you tonight, God will never give up up on you. He's always there. Just like that prodigal son who went, who, who, you know, denied all of that righteous living that he had with his father. And he went and gave away all of his inheritance, swandled it, you know, and then ended up in the pigsty, the lowest place for a Jewish person. That's where he ended up. Some of you might be in a low place right now. Come on back home. Hallelujah. The father is raiding right there with open arms to receive you back. All you have to do is come on back and ask God to forgive you. I'm sure, you know, Paul, when he got knocked off his horse, hallelujah, knocked to his feet and was blinded, you know that he had to cry out to God and God delivered him. And that's why he is said to have written these epistles and all these letters, you know, and he was the preacher of the gospel, expounding on the gospel. What a wonderful wonderful thing. He was the perfect person to let us know about Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God tonight that, you know, he didn't stop at Adam messing it up for everyone. You know, because when you think about it, sin has to be paid for because God is holy. And because he's holy, he couldn't just overlook that sin that took place, but he made a way. And that's when he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, hallelujah, to come down here and to be the atonement. Think about that for a second. He appeased God. He became our atonement. That blood that was shed atoned for our sins. Oh, hallelujah. We are are a blessed people who have a God that loves us, hallelujah, that is pulling for us, hallelujah, that wants us to be the bride that he has created us to be, hallelujah, now that Jesus has done the hard part, Jesus, because no one else could satisfy, no one else was without sin except Jesus, no one else could appease God, and just think what our Savior did as he hung on that cross, all of that sin passed, you know, future and 
prison, all of that sin, Jesus bore it on that cross. Hallelujah. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because God cannot, you know, be a part of sin. That's why it's so important to know all that has been done for us. All of this sin that has been paid for so that you and I can now enjoy that relationship with God. We can call him Abba Father. Why? Because blood was shed. The blood of Jesus atoned for our sins, satisfied, appeased God. Hallelujah. And made things all right. So when God sees us, <laughs> he sees the blood. The blood, hallelujah, that covers us the blood of his only begotten son. I don't know about you, but that makes me glad. Hallelujah. That makes me know that if God would do all of this for us, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if God be for us, he's more than the world that is against us. And if he would give us his son, what, what else? What else is so hard for God? There's nothing too hard for God. God has me on this scripture in Mark 9, 23. Jesus said, if you can believe all things are possible to him that believe. Do you believe today? Hallelujah. Do you believe that God made it all right? Do you believe that he can make it all right in your house? Do you believe that he can turn some situations around in your life? Give your life to him. Hallelujah. Turn it over to him and let God be God in your life. Oh, he loves you today. He sent this word so you know that your sins have been atoned for by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who suffered. Hallelujah. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, Lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, Rose of Sharon. Oh, hallelujah. He is beautiful tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus, our Messiah. Hallelujah is wonderful. Hallelujah. He is a wonder. And I want you to know he loves you even more than you can ever imagine. He loves you. Hallelujah. So give your life to him. Turn it over to him. Give him your children. Give him your job. Give him whatever is bothering you. Give it to Jesus and allow him, like he said, cast your burdens upon me before, because he cares for you. He can carry the load. Hallelujah. He is our mediator. He's our great high priest. Hallelujah. He's the head of the church. Give your life to him so you can be part of this great family, the kingdom of God, where God rules. Hallelujah. If your life is submitted to him and you're obeying his, ro his word, then you are part of the kingdom of God, where God, hallelujah, is king. Hallelujah. We live by the every word that came out of his mouth, the Bible. We live by the Bible. We obey the Bible and we preach the gospel. Hallelujah. This great gospel, because guess what? There's still room hallelujah there's still room in the kingdom the door has not been shut Jesus has not the trumpet I should say has not sounded hallelujah so there is still room at the banquet table for anyone that would say yes to Jesus today hallelujah know that all is well today know that this kingdom hallelujah shall not end and it's going to continue you forever and ever and ever and ever will be praising will be singing will be dancing will be shouting will be giving our God the shout out abo shot yeah will be giving our God the glory hallelujah for he alone is worthy he's alone he alone is worthy to be praised oh bless the Lord hallelujah oh praise him today oh magnify him hallelujah oh glorify him and thank Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for his mercy, his grace, his steadfast love. Thank him for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Thank him for loving us. Thank him, hallelujah, for protecting us and keeping us and providing for us. God has done great things. Know today, again, that the blood has covered it all. And I want you to know that I love you today. I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, 
Keep praising him and keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah, God bless you. One of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.